welcome back uh, today we will discuss the analysis of circular slab so if you remember in the last class we learned the analysis of two way slabs for that we learned a little bit theoretical calculations for converting the inclined line moment or the way of expressing the uh, inclined line moments with uh, the horizontal and the vertical components for doing the circular slab analysis by the yield line method we need to know about the nodal forces so today we will discuss that first and then we will see for the analysis of circular slabs so i will uh, just read through nodal forces that means the forces or the e line joining at a common node nodal forces arise at the corners of slab segments wherever an e line intersects with another e line so it's always happening at the junction of the intersections johansen a well uh, known person in the field of uh, yield limit method for e line theory he gave several theorems regarding the nodal forces and without uh, going into an involved mathematical proof some of the theorems are which are required for solving the simple problems using equilibrium as stated below so our analysis will be based on this simple theorems so first one is that at the junction of any number of e line at the junction of any number of e line irrespective of their signs that is uh, it can be a negative moment it can be a positive moment uh, so that uh, there will be a negative e line positive e line positive e lines are always by the sagging moments and the negative are by the hogging moments so irrespective of their signs the sum of nodal forces is equal to zero the second one is that at the junction of e line each of the nodal forces is zero if all the yield lines are either all negative or positive that means if uh, a, at a point there is a positive yield line and a negative yield line then that should be of equal value to nullify the total value and if both are either positive or both uh, negative then individual value should be zero because even on addition uh, it need it can be zero because of uh, the same sign according to this theorem the nodal forces at the interior junction of e lines are zero because at the interior point all will be a positive e line this simplifies the analysis by equilibrium methods this is the main uh, requirement for us the nodal force b at the intersection of an e line with a free edge is computed using the following equation b is equal to m by cot alpha so we have used this b as in the case of equilibrium method solution of the slabs because this was uh, giving a contribution to the shear force as well as the a bending moment so that value is given by b is equal to m 
y into cot alpha where my is the ultimate moment capacity of the slab at the node in the direction perpendicular to the free edge the nodal force will be a positive force segment with acute angle and upward it is negative for obtuse angle as segment is shown below so it is shown the e line uh, then the free edge so the e line is at an angle of alpha from the e line if the angle is uh, acute it is nodal force is taken uh, downward because it's having the more component downwards and uh, it will be positive and with an acute angle which having more horizontal component it is taken <coughs> upward okay so that's the uh, basic uh, theory involved or the guidelines for solving the uh, problems with the intersection of e line so this will be very useful for analyzing the circular slabs also so now we will have a look at the analysis of circular slabs just uh, read through for the important names. A circular slab can be considered as a polygonal slab with sides tending to infinity. Therefore, consider an isotropically reinforced regular n sided polygon slab continuous over the edges. Figure 20.16. So, this is uh, and uh, regarded as the circular one which combination of so many polygons so uh, if you see here the ends are fixed support so that the negative e line will be yielded along the fixed supports and all the internal ones will be positive e line this is a joint where all the e lines are meeting so in, in this point uh, all the positive e lines are meeting so that all the individual e line value should be zero at this point where the negative e line and the positive e line are meeting uh, the sum with sign should be equal to zero okay. and uniformly distributed load of intensity w let mb and mt be the positive bottom reinforcement <coughs> Sorry, uh, let MP and MT be the positive value, uh, positive moment and positive torsion for the bottom reinforcement and negative for top reinforcement at the supports. Ultimate moment capacities per meter of the slab. Let L be the length of each side of polygon and R be the radius of the inscribed circle. So if you see the L is the length of the uh, segment and R is the radius. The postulated E line pattern of the slab is shown in figure 24.16. So, uh, the for circular slab it is always like this. It is it is uh, the design is chose to how uh, to divide the segments or to what number of segments the circular slab has to be divided so here you can see on the e line proposed since the e lines meeting at the center of the slab all positive are governed by same mesh the nodal forces at this force uh, point should be zero as per the uh, principles given or that we learned uh, in the previous section Considering the equilibrium of one segment AOB, we will get. So we are taking this segment AOB. For this one, the equilibrium MB plus MT total uh, moment into L is equal to W into LR by 2 into r by 3 is equal to w l, l r square by 6 so by considering the equilibrium uh, 
we we got this equation and after simplifying we will get w is equal to 6 by r square into mb plus mt so this is the equation which is available to us So this equation can be applied uh, to a wide range of cases of regular sided polygonal slabs by substituting the suitable values of parameters. Uh, say we are having a equilateral uh, triangular slab uh, where n is equal to 3 where n is the number of sides and for that the r will be equal to l by 2 root 3. For a square slab, for n sides, r is equal to l by 2. For a hexagonal slab, n uh, with 6, r is equal to root 3 by 2 into l. For a circular slab, uh, we don't uh, we have an infinite uh, number of phases, and the l also tend to 0 because of uh, very uh, small segments uh, by which it can be divided like this and the r becomes radius of circle directly and uh, by substituting those values we will get w is equal to 6 by r square into mb plus mt so those things are given here and this will be the basic equation uh, for solving all the problems related to the circular slabs we will do a problem to make it clear example 20.5 Determine the ultimate moment capacity of a simply supported circular slab of 4.5 meter diameter. The slab is supported on 230 mm thick masonry walls and has to carry a live load of uh, 3 kN per square meter and finished load of uh, this much. So that uh, means that uh, we are applying a, a UDL over the surface of the circular slab. Assuming that the slab is uh, 120 mm thick and is isotropically reinforced the effective radius of the slab so we need the depth of slab to find the effective uh, span uh, like from the center of support to center of support and to convert it radius so total uh, diameter 4.5 clear diameter plus uh, center to center between support so the support thickness is 0.23 so all divided by 2 will give you the effective radius 2.365 and then the calculations for load self weight of slab we know uh, it comes around uh, 2 then 2 kN per meter square finished load given as 1 live load given as 3 total load adding all this 7 into 1.5 10.50 then directly applying the uh, equation from equation 20.18 so this equation uh, yeah, the situation uh, put empty is equal to zero because <coughs> slab is uh, simply supported. So there won't be any uh, torsion moment acting uh, as the beam is simply supported, and m is equal to w into a square by six. So it's uh, obtained as 9.79 kN per meter. Therefore, the <coughs> orthogonal uh, mesh required in the slab corresponds to a factored moment of 8.86 kN per meter per meter. From the elastic analysis discussed in section 3.2, the radius, radial and circumferential Bending moment at the center of the slab is given by 3w into a square by uh, 60.
so uh, this is actually a check on the obtained value and a comparison of the results of yield line analysis with the results of elastic analysis show that the bending moment obtained from yield line analysis that is this value based on the equation uh, is uh, 11.1 percentage less than the elastic bending moment through the theoretical equation so if you remember we told in the initial class that the equilibrium method of solving the problem will give a lower bound value that is uh, the theoretical value is 11 and obtained value is 10.7 and if you use the virtual work method the value should have be higher than 11.01 as it is upper bound so it's less than elastic bending moment if one designs the slab on the basis of e line analysis then proper checking of deflections and cracking is very mandatory as the normal procedure involves only the controlled deflection indirectly therefore the use of the results of e line analysis for the design purposes should be avoided so these are actually approximate methods to know the approximate collapse load for a given slab so uh, we we can't use this one uh, directly for solving and designing the slabs because it will uh, it because the design needs some more checks uh, which is not uh, Correct, uh, which will not be correct with respect to this e line analysis. So that's the uh, topic topics we uh, have discussed for today's class, and that's the end of the class. Thank you.